Welcome to day 47. Happy Easter. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts and minds so that we may hear your voice and be given the courage to act upon it throughout this joyous day. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I tossed on a little uh, white a uh, little white overcoat uh, today um, is a little bit of a, a symbolic. Uh, we are at day 47 and we are still continuing our discussion of obedience. Today we speak about the vow of obedience, or I should say St. Alphonsus does. And um, But it's in light of Easter. You have made it 47 days into this journey. You have been faithful every single day since Ash Wednesday. And that is truly something to celebrate. But it's not over. So we will continue our journey today as we celebrate the great resurrection. So the vow of obedience. St. Thomas teaches that it is the vow of obedience that makes the religious. On this account, St. Teresa used to say that a religious who is not obedient is not deserving of the name of religious. On the other hand, a religious who practices obedience is on the shortest road to perfection. O virtue of obedience, she cries out, thou dost accomplish everything. St. Catherine of Bologna said that obedience alone is more pleasing to God than all other good works. When the venerable Leonardi, founder of the clerics regular of the Mother of God, was asked by his disciples to give them a rule, he wrote on a sheet of paper just this one word, obedience. By this he wished to show, as Sertorius Caputum remarks, that in religious life, obedience and sanctity are one and the same thing. Thoroughly convinced of this truth, St. Anselm, on becoming Archbishop of Canterbury and finding no one above him, induced the Holy Father to make his chaplain his superior, whom he obeyed in everything. According to the opinion of St. Bonaventure, all the perfection of the religious life consists in the renunciation of self-will. Obedience to the rules and the commands of superiors is the greatest sacrifice the soul can make to God. It is certain that a religious who obeys exactly acquires rich treasures of merit. St. Aloysius Gonzaga compared the religious life to a sailboat on which a person can make progress without the use of oars. And it is very true, for in religious life, not only when we fast or pray or meditate, but also when we take our meals, our rest, or our recreation, we are acquiring merit. For as all this is done out of obedience, the will of God is accomplished and merit is thereby gained. In the life of the ancient fathers, it is related that one of them saw two choirs of the blessed in heaven. One of the choirs consisted of those who had left the world and had lived in solitude, devoted to a life of prayer and penance. The other choir was made up of those who had subjected themselves to a life of obedience for the love of Jesus Christ and had lived entirely according to the will of their superiors. These latter enjoyed a greater degree of glory than the former. For though the hermits had pleased God by their spiritual exercises, they nevertheless had done their own will, whereas the others, by means of the vow of obedience, had given their will to God, the best offering they could make him. St. Dorotheus relates something similar in reference to his disciple, St. Dositheus. The latter had very poor health and in consequence was unable to perform the customary exercises with the rest of the community. In order not to lose any merit thereby, he made a perfect renunciation of his will and devoted himself entirely to the practice of obedience. After five years, he departed this life. Now, God revealed to the abbot Dorotheus that this holy youth had obtained in heaven a reward equal to that of the holy hermits, St. Paul and St. Anthony. The monks were surprised that Dositheus should have attained such great glory as he had not even done as much as the others. But God made known to them that it was due to his obedience that Dositheus had been so richly rewarded. 
If you ask me what is the best and most effectual means of obeying in a meritorious manner, I answer. Be thoroughly persuaded that when you are obeying your superior, you are obeying God. And when you despise the command of your superior, you are despising the divine Redeemer himself. St. John Climacus relates that the superior of a cloister once called an old monk, and to give the others an example, he bade him remain standing for a long time. When later they asked the old monk what were his sentiments during this mortification, he replied, I imagined that I stood before Jesus Christ, and that he himself had imposed upon me this humiliation, and therefore I had not the slightest thought against obedience. So thus ends our section for today. And I think many times because of the language that St. Alphonsus is using, particularly as he's talking about, you know, for the religious, etc. I think the what we need to really focus on is this example of who gains greater merit in the eyes of God. And is it those who go off and live in solitude, devote themselves to lives of prayer and penance, or those who subjected themselves to the life of obedience for the love of Jesus and lived according, entirely according to the will of their superiors. We all have superiors in this life. Our, it was our parents when we were children. It is, as we even as we get to be adults, it is, as we've been talking about, uh, continues to be our parents in, in some ways, but then also it is our spiritual director. It is our boss you know if we if we are working it is um our laws our government um you know those uh that are lawful and that we have to abide by um so all of we have superiors so what i'm trying to get at is the fact that when we don't do our will so for example i'm married and i have children so when i am not doing my will but rather am being obedient to the will of my spouse and also to the will of my children, i.e. they need me, I need to serve them, I need to be obedient to my vocation. I am doing the will of God. One of my favorite uh, prayers, and I, and I say it every day, is the Susupe prayer by St. Ignatius. And the Susupe prayer is a simple one in which it is, take, O Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. Whatever I have or hold you have given me, I restore it all to you and surrender it wholly to be governed by your will. Give me only your love and your grace, and I am rich enough and ask for nothing more. What could be a better resolution than to humbly offer our will? our life out of gratitude for the eternal life that our Lord has won for us as he conquered darkness, sin, and death. So let us rejoice. O sleeper, awaken. Awaken to the life that is possible when we set aside our will and give it to God and are obedient to it. Know my continued prayers for each and every one of you, especially that you have a most joyous Easter. And then I'll see you tomorrow as we continue our journey throughout the Easter season because we're going to rejoice. It's not just Lent, but it's also about Easter and continuing to live this journey to the full. God bless. See you tomorrow.